Oh, hi everyone. Um, I hope you're doing well. Let's see, let me get this camera right. So I was planning on wearing something cute every time I go online, but um, you know, I'm so lucky that we live in the woods. So, and I'm here in maintaining isolation. We're not in isolation, but we're maintaining it and all of our neighbors are great at maintaining it. So, hi mom. <laughs> so we, we spent most of the day playing in the woods. And um, so I'm not wearing anything cute because uh, this is what I was wearing hiking in the woods today. Um, so I want to talk to you guys because, you know, we're, yes, thank you. I love talking to you guys. But, you know, of course, we're going through some terrifying times. And um, one thing that we're seeing more and more and more of on social media and um, hi everyone, is like the fear and anxiety that's coming up. You know, it, it's as dangerous to us as everything else that's happening. Um, and I just wanted to share, this isn't like the great guru of fear and anxiety, but these are a few techniques that I have learned. Um, and I wish I could tell you where to go and learn them, but I learned them from the Akashic Librarians and the Galactic Collective and the my studies in the etheric sur surgery realm. And um, hi, Joyce. Hi, Leanne, um, and also um, Gaia, Mother Mary, and Mary Magdalene. So, these, so if you connect with any of these groups or any enlightened beings, you can take what I'm going to talk about today and maybe talk with your guides about this. Hi, Donovan. <laughs> so the first thing is um, we very easily feel victimized. When we feel fear and anxiety, we feel victimized. Um, and when, you know, and then we freeze up and um, get overwhelmed. So many of us in modern society, oh, hi, C. Sang. Hi, so nice to uh, see your name. <laughs> but, um, so many of us are used to living in the modern world in a constant state of fear and anxiety. We have high pressure jobs. We have a lot of expenses. We have, you know, I mean, all the situations we're in in our daily life can make fear and anxiety a part of like how we define ourselves as people. But that's not how we're supposed to be. The point of fear and anxiety is to motivate action. So if you look at animals in the wild, or if you look at people who live in nature or people who, um, you know, are very divine, when they feel fear or anxiety, these emotions exist, they serve a purpose, and it's to get you to change your situation. So if you are a deer with your family of deer and you're grazing and suddenly you see a coyote, walking towards you with that hungry gleam in their eye, you're going to feel fear. And that motivates you and your family to raise up your little white tails and run away. Anxiety is the same thing. You know, if you're standing on a cliff and you realize this isn't a dangerous, you know, it's a dangerous situation. It's not healthy for you. Fear or anxiety kick in to motivate you to maybe take a step back or to make sure that there aren't a bunch of like pebbles under your feet or whatever. So fear and anxiety exist for, uh, <laughs> yeah, Donovan's turned his back on the whole subject. <laughs> um, fear and anxiety are important emotions. They're what keep us, hi Uma, from, uh, from doing stupid things and endanger our lives or doing seemingly smart things. They're also like when you get that feeling in the pit of your stomach, you know, your gut instinct is kicking in. A lot of times that's also your guides or your guardian angel telling you, oh, look at that. 
<laughs> I'm seeing the opposite of everything. So I saw my shoulder tilted. So I tilted it more, but sorry, ADHD moment. Um, when your guardian angel is trying to tell you, get away from where you're at or change your decision. So whenever you feel fear or anxiety, don't immediately put up walls to block it or don't, you know, absorb it and feel like that's all you deserve. Honor it for what it really is. It's a warning sign for you to stop and look at what's going on around you. Or again, if you're that deer, to put up your tail and run, but to be aware of your situation and do whatever you need to do to get away from what is creating the fear. And I don't mean necessarily physically away. It can be an internal away. It can be a mental away. So some examples are um, sometimes the fear or anxiety that come up are because you feel powerless. You don't know what your options are. So therefore research and real research might be the answer so that you can do whatever preparations you need. And for the whole coronavirus thing, I keep telling everyone and I'm telling all of you and tell your friends, do your research. Don't just go with what a doctor says or a scientist and don't go with what the politicians say. You know, like when it comes to political stuff or hello, where is that $2 trillion money that's supposed to be in our accounts already? I mean, not yet, but as soon as I hear it, I want it. You know, that's fine. But when it comes to how will coronavirus affect you and your loved ones, look at what's happening around the world. Look at what is happening now and has been happening in Italy, because that lets us know what is happening and what will happen here and what changes we can make in our lives to make sure it doesn't happen here. You know, we are much more empowered than we think we are. Um, so I just want to say when you feel fear and anxiety, let that motivate you to take action. The other thing about fear and anxiety is we can live with it for so long. Like when I was a single mom doing corporate work and time and again, I would have some boss who would use my being a single mom, which by the way, when I say a single, I don't mean divorce shared custody. It was all on me, the finances, the daily management, everything. Thank God for my extended family, like my mom, my dad, you know, my siblings who would helped me. Otherwise, I don't know what would have happened, but my ex didn't help at all. So time and again, I would have a corporate boss who would use that to mess with me well, you better get here an hour ahead of when everyone else does, or your children will not have a mother who has a job. Like, so the whole time I did corporate work, I was in a constant state of anxiety because everything I cared about was constantly being threatened. And that's why I eventually left it, started my own consulting business. And then these same people had to pay me a lot more money for a lot less work. And I was no longer in anxiety, you know, and then opened up the wellness center. And now I'm just like a ne'er do well. Um, so that's the thing. I chose not to live in the daily fear and anxiety, but it took me like seven years of realizing this is not what I wanted in my life to be able to make the change. So I had seven years where I was just terrified all the time and I was planning and I was preparing and I was getting extra degrees and I was doing everything to set it up for a seamless transition. However, when I did that, I was so used to being in a state of terror all the time. I had to work on myself to release that terror. It was so much a part of my daily life I didn't know how to breathe without it. I didn't know how to go to sleep. There it is. I'm messing with my shoulders again. I didn't know how to go to sleep unless I was like traumatizing myself about if I don't do all this stuff, then my family's going to be homeless. You know, so trust me, we all feel this. The other thing about fear and anxiety 
um, is if it's been with you in the past and it's an issue that you have not 100% released, it may trigger this feeling in you again and again in a much more extreme level than your situation in the moment merits. Um, and those of you who do heart math, you know, that that's delves into this kind of stuff. Um, so, oh, hi, Sally. So nice to see you. Um, so what I encourage you all to do is when you feel fear or anxiety, um, and this isn't the only thing to do. This is just one thing that I've found to be very beneficial for myself and clients over the years is treat the fear, the anxiety, the emotion, the terror, the raw screaming feelings um, as though they are your client and you are their therapist. Treat them like they are a human being that happens to be in some part of your body. So let them express themselves. Like you may find every time you relax for a moment, suddenly all the terror pops up. So instead, and then you want to repress it. You're like, no, 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 I'm trying to relax now. Terror, go away, go away. Instead, invite it up and say, well, I'm trying to relax now. What is going on? And the terror will say, I've been trying to get your attention for so long. I am stuck in your body and I want out. And you're like, well, I don't want terror in my body and you don't want to be in my body. So let's uh, work this out. What's the issue? Well, do you remember when you were eight years old and something traumatic happened? You're like, oh yeah, that's so funny. What's so important to an eight year old is no longer important to an adult. I can't believe I was so upset about that. And the emotion will say, I have been stuck in you ever since then. And from that time and all these other experiences through like every exam in high school, through how to get into college, through job interviews, through relationships not working out or whatever, I have been here screaming in agony, stuck in your body. And you're like, well then why don't you leave? Go back to your soul family, go to your energy family. Invite every emotion that's within you that is not one that is healthful for your state of love and joy to represent to you, to tell their story, to share what they have. Ask them, what do you need from me for you to feel good? Because it could be this emotion wants to turn inside of you into love. So, you know, what you, you know, talk with it and say, you know what, can you go back to that time? Don't relive it, just go back to it and whisper to the person you were when you were age eight, don't worry, it'll all work out and you are loved. Sometimes that works out really well. Like I said, don't hide from your emotions. Become friends, become family with your emotions and then allow them to go where they wish to go, where they need to be so that they can be their healthiest, happiest energy. So having said that, um, let's do a quick meditation with that, okay? Yeah, so um, relax. Uh, your eyes can be open or closed, whatever works for you. Um, breathe however you like to breathe. Invite your body to absorb the oxygen. Invite all the energy in your body to just relax and flow. Take a few breaths. Let your body absorb what's there. And now go into your heart. Go into your heart. Feel your heart. Look in your heart. Resonate with your heart. Just pay attention to your heart. It doesn't matter if it's, um, you know, visual, emotional, if you're seeing your real beating heart or colors or 
glitter or whatever. Just be resonate with your heart. Invite your heart to absorb the oxygen that's flowing. Invite your heart to absorb the energy that's flowing through your body. You may feel areas in your heart that have tension or bands wrapped around them or black spots. Connect with those areas and with your mind or out loud if you like, whisper into your heart, love. Allow the word love to float from your awareness to your heart. Love. Love. Let love flow into your heart. Let the word love imprint into your heart. Love. Invite your heart to open up and say into this opening, love, love. Invite your heart to become open and porous like a sponge. And then say to it, love let your love flow in and saturate the sponge in your heart love love and allow that love to flow and expand You may feel like this is a very comfortable state and it should because when we are not in human form, we are pure energy. Our souls are made of love. We are beings of love. That is our natural state. Here's the thing, each and every one of us, each and every one of you is absolutely perfect as you are. I know this because before you came to life, you designed yourself, your soul designed you, and the aspect of you who was ready for life designed you, designed your life, designed your challenges. Nothing goes according to plan, so don't blame yourself for all the mess ups. Don't worry. But who you are, not all the experiences of your life, that's a whole other thing. Who you are, the way you look, the things that are difficult for you, the things that are easy for you, your natural tendencies. The things you do that you're embarrassed about and the things that you are that you're proud of, you designed all of this to be the perfect you for your purpose of this life. Honor yourself because you are perfect. Honor yourself. You are a perfect being of love who is having an extraordinary experience in a life. All of these anxieties and fears are challenges for you to figure out how can I acknowledge this or get through this 
or sidestep this and find my way back to joy, find my way back to fully being love. Take a moment now and invite one of your personal fears or anxieties, one that's been with you for a while, not the recent coronavirus, something personal for you that normally when you relax, it rises up and you push it down because that's what we do. Invite one of these, maybe not the most traumatic one, but the most accessible one to rise up and present itself to you. Something that normally you want to shun, you want to hide from, but this time you're going to say, hello, who are you? And it will respond. It will either respond verbally or a thought in your head or a memory or an emotion or pain somewhere in your body. It will respond. And ask it to present itself. Ask it, how long has it been with you? Or can it tell you about major times when it started with you? Has it been with you your whole life or since a traumatic situation? Or is it just a general feeling that won't go away? Let it pour its heart out to you. Right now is probably the first moment in this emotion's entire life that anyone has been willing to listen to it. It's probably got a lot to share. You can ask this emotion, what does it need from you in order to go off, leave your body, and become one with its energy family? You may have to have a few meetings with this energy, or it may be willing to release from you right now, or it might be angry at you, treat you like you're a jailer and it's been kept in prison all this time, trapped in you, totally ignored. Or it might be afraid to go back to its energy family. It might feel like, oh no, 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 my family won't want me. If you get that, just say to it, look up there. Your family is right up there they love you, they're calling to you, they can't wait for you. Go on, get out of me and go up to them. They can't wait to see you. Go back home, be one with your energy family. And then feel it, feel the energy leave you. Remember, you are not your experiences. You are not your thoughts or your emotions. You are not your reactions. You are your soul having an experience. And the goal of this experience is to always, no matter what you're going through, Find your way back to love and joy. So 
So that's all for tonight. I want to thank you all for joining me. And Black Cat also thanks you for joining us. I love you all. Have a wonderful night. If you have any questions about this, feel welcome to contact me. And um, remember, keep yourself healthy, safe. Always find your way back to love because that's how you find your way back to your true self. Bye.